It's a beautiful warm spring day today. Pretty perfect actually. The skies are so blue. Which is pretty good because considering that most of my plants are echeverias, they grow during the warmer months. And just by looking around, I can clearly see that a lot of my plants are having growth spurts. And this works really well for me because right now I'm doing a propagation push. And this type of weather is going to help them grow really fast. Thankfully, what I have to do today does not require me to stand under the heat of the sun. So let's move on to the covers. In last week's episode, I showed you how to harvest echeveria seeds. And in this episode, I'll have a go at manually pollinating my plants. So I've got a few here. I might have a look at the others outside, but I'll start with this for now. This episode is yet another entry in my propagation series of videos. And if you do not want to miss out on any updates on these propagations, then make sure to hit subscribe and enable notifications if you're on YouTube. And if you're on Facebook, make sure to like and follow my page. I also apologize for all of this mess in my workstation. As you might have heard, I recently opened a shop, an online shop, and I previously uploaded an announcement video about it. So you could find the link to it in the description and feel free to have a look. In order to move on, I need to make sense of my workstation. So I have to remove everything that's not related to my pollination attempt shortly. So yeah. And this is what I'm left with. This is a greenhouse I prepared in last episode. And these are the plants that I've set aside, which I think are going to bloom soon. Well, they have already bloomed as you can see, but what I meant was the flower should be opening up soon. It appears that this one, this Mira here, hasn't opened yet. Well, it's about to, but I might have to do this off camera, you know? I'm not sure if the rest here have already opened. I'm pretty sure this one is open because from memory, some of the flowers have already opened at the time that I was wrapping this. So pretty sure this one is. I'm not sure if these two are ready. This one isn't yet. And I think we're going to focus on this three for now. Apart from the plants and the greenhouse, obviously I'm going to have my paint brushes. I bought a set of flat paint brushes from my local um, craft store, I guess. I think it was a craft store. And of course, to help you see the action, I'm going to have my macro setup again. And this is going to be for later. Before we start unwrapping these flowers, I think it's worth discussing what we're supposed to do here. So as you're probably expecting, I'm going to pollinate the flowers. And what does pollination entail? Well, this is literally going to be a birds and the bees talk because in my garden, it's the birds and the bees that are pollinating my plants. Well, maybe some of the flies as well, some other insects, but it's mostly those two. And how does pollination happen? Well, when mama plant and papa plant love each other so much, then they... Nah, not this one. For flowering plants like the Echeverias, the reproductive organs are actually found in the flowers. Before we could dive deep into pollination, we must need to know what we're dealing with. And for that, we must familiarize ourselves with the basic anatomy of the flower. Let's review our elementary classes. To put it really simply, there are two main parts of the flower that you have to concern yourself about. And these are the pistil and the stamen. Whoa, Chuck, jargon! Simply put, the pistil is the female part of the flower and the stamen is the male part of the flower. And further down those structures, you only need to concern yourself with the tips. On the tip of the pistil, you will find the stigma. And on the tip of the stamen, you will find the anther. Echeverias have 10 stamens and they have one pistil at the center. So if you're ever confused which one is which, the center would be the female part and surrounding it would be the male parts. Looks like we have a reverse harem situation here. You know what? It's funny that I keep adding more plants for my demos, but I haven't removed this ones yet. So let's go do that now. Of the four plants that I previously prepared, only these three have open flowers. This one still has them closed, so I'm going to keep an eye on this. Maybe I could cover it again. 
but for the sake of this experiment I'm going to use some of the plants that I added in here like this colorata and this bella rouge I'm not sure if I would still use this polydonis because it looks like it has been open for quite a while now might even have been pollinated already so I'll set this aside and the next step is to take a look at the brushes that I have I bought a set and it has 15 in here five of each color doesn't really matter they're all the same I think what I have to be uh, mindful here is the size of the brush and you can see here that they are of varying sizes I think I might need to use the very fine tip brush my intuition tells me that you would have to clean the brushes before every attempt of gathering some pollen that way you are sure that you are gathering pollen of the same type you know you don't have you're not mixing up anything but i guess that's only if you're gathering pollen from different types of flowers but if you're going to use one type of pollen just one type of plant and pollinate all of them then it doesn't really matter in my case i'm thinking of doing all sorts of hybrids not just this ones i'm planning to use these plants as the seed parents so there are two parents for every hybrid there's the seed parent and the pollen parent and I think the names are intuitive themselves. Seed parents basically mean that they are the receptacle of the pollen, while the pollen parent is the, the plant or flower where you got the pollen from. In my case, I'm thinking of having a look at my garden, see what else are open right now, and just grab the pollen from there. Although, of course, I could also do a demo gathering pollen from one of these plants. That way, I could give you an example or a demonstration of how it works. Of course, you're also going to need your pen and paper. In my case, I'm using the same notebook as last time. You would want to capture as much information as you could provide. So in this case, I'm going to indicate the parents, the seed parent, the fallen parent. I might even include photos or even a video using this camera, using this video. I'll have to be really specific which plants I'm working on. That way, it would be easier for me to pinpoint because it might be important down the line. I'm also taking note of the date and time, so once we start harvesting and pollinating, I'll be writing it down here. And I guess that's pretty much it. There might be some other details that I have to take note of, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. The Bella Rouge has the largest flowers among the bunch, so I'm going to use this as my demo for the pollen extraction. And here's our first pair. This is an Agavoilis Lemaire, or at least a hybrid based on the Agavoilis Lemaire. And this is a Bella Rouge. Both of these are echeverias, and I can't wait to see what the results would be like. So take your brush, just use it to touch the tips of the stamens, and with a few strokes, the pollen should just stick right into it. Once you've gathered enough pollen, use the brush to spread the pollen all over the stigma of the other plant. When in doubt, just keep adding pollen. And just to be sure that these flowers are those that I have pollinated, I removed all of the other flowers, just snip them off using my scissors. This should reduce the number of variables that are not under my control. So I've got one down, and I'll go around the garden and look for a pollen parent for this Bella Rouge. I've got something in mind. I'm hoping it's not too late, but here's my Romeo and it has one flower stalk left. Hopefully there's still some pollen in here. I've transferred the pollen to all five plants now and I've got them in my notes. I've got five different pairs. This is going to be interesting. And in the course of doing that, I had to remove some of the flower stalks because I needed to make sure that only the flowers that I left here are those that I have pollinated. Some of the flower stalks had to be removed and as you can see from this flower stalk, it still has lots of leaves. In the next episode, I'll be showing you what to do with this. That's right, the next episode would be a refresher on my leaf propagation technique. You wouldn't want to miss that. So the next step from here is to wait for all of these flowers to fertilize, produce the seeds, and hopefully in a few weeks time, 
or maybe less. I'm not sure how long the fertilization takes place, but we will know. But as soon as I see signs that the flowers are ready to be harvested, then I'll definitely create an update video. It would be out of the let's plant schedule because it could happen anytime. I'll probably publish the update video outside of the regular let's plant schedule because this might happen at any time. You have no idea how long this takes. And again, if you do not want to miss out, make sure you're subscribed or followed depending on the platform that you're in. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Special thanks to my Patreon supporters that's Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Lorena Noti, Camila Narvaez, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Jesse May, Q2, and everyone else who pledge on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram that's at Seriscapades and I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEcheveria.